This episode of Nitro Analysis intends to discuss BF3's various methods of laser targeting. There are three ways to designate a laser target. The SOFLAM, a helicopter's laser painter, and the main battle tank's CITV station. Similarly, there are three laser-compatible weapons. These are the Javelin, Guided Missiles, and the MBT's Guided Shell. In testing, the Nitro team was unable to find a consistent way to outmaneuver a laser-targeted Javelin. And it got me. I'll fire in in three, two, one, fire. Go ahead and fire. Okay, fire in three, two, one, fire. And, okay, and go ahead and fire. fire. The only somewhat reliable way to not get hit with one is to break the laser target's lock on the vehicle. This can be accomplished in one of three ways. The pilot or driver can break line of sight with the laser by either moving behind cover or, in this case, past the laser targeting device to the point where it is no longer looking at the vehicle. Firing three, two, one, fire. Locked, locked, lock is breaking, lock is off, I don't hear the missile coming. Oh, yeah, it's circling, it's circling. man, it's right. The pilot or driver can move out of the maximum range of the laser targeting system. Yeah, it blew up, like, way behind me. Go Finally, go. the pilot or driver can deploy either smoke or use an ECM jammer. This will temporarily break the laser lock. Using this method too early or too late, Whoa. however, will still result in a death. Yeah. I still got a lock. <laughs> nope. Right. These three methods work most of the time, but we also observed scenarios when they didn't. It's very difficult to pin down exactly what makes a laser-compatible weapon work or not work. From the user's perspective, laser targeting systems are a tactical, team-oriented, and effective way to deal large amounts of damage to both ground and air targets. From a pilot or driver's perspective, however, Laser targeting is an ambiguous and consequently frustrating experience. There are three reasons for this. There is no audible difference between being locked by a laser targeting system and being locked by a heat seeker. There is no audible confirmation for when a laser compatible weapon has actually been fired. The SOFLAM has a visible laser, but other laser targeters do not. Because of this, much of the time there is no way to tell what is targeting your vehicle. Considering the difference between being hit by a heat seeker and a laser compatible weapon is the difference between life and death, this level of inconsistency and ambiguity is detrimental to gameplay. For this reason, I believe it is necessary to fix all three of these issues. Give laser targeting its own unique locking sound. Let the driver or pilot know when a laser-compatible weapon has actually been fired. Give helicopter laser painters and the CITV station a visible laser. Now, you might think that adding a unique sound to laser targeting systems would be a nerf to them, and you'd be right, that's true. But from another perspective, incorporating this feature would create an interesting gameplay dynamic that does not currently explicitly exist. Area denial. Paranoid pilots would never knowingly enter an area with such a powerful threat covering it. Imagine a lone recon sitting on a hill with no javelin support. He deploys a SOFLAM and targets an enemy helicopter. Now, hearing the laser's unique targeting sound, the pilot has a choice. Does he back off and try another angle of attack, or does he call the recon's bluff and move into the fight? Now that's some interesting, unambiguous gameplay. In addition to laser targeting system's general lack of clarity, there are several other issues we observed during testing. 
Laser targeting systems are near useless against jets. This is due to their high speed, which enables them to outrun laser-compatible weapons and shorten the duration in which they are capable of being targeted. Designating a target rewards a player with 10 points. When the target is hit with a laser-compatible weapon, an additional 45 or 60 points are awarded in the form of target-designated hit points. Sometimes these points aren't awarded, and I don't really know why. Additionally, this isn't a lot of points when you consider how many can be gained from destroying a vehicle that another player has so kindly targeted. Ideally, the targeter and the attacker should be gaining the same number of points, as they both worked equally for the kill. Points are not gained from an autonomous SOFLAM. This is inconsistent when compared to other autonomous recon gadgets. A laser targeting system will switch targets unnecessarily. Ideally, it should prioritize the target closest to the center of the crosshair. Collecting a new SOFLAM from an ammo box disallows the player from operating a previously deployed SOFLAM. Fix this by making the Deploy button separate from the Operation button. I believe my proposed changes would greatly enhance laser targeting systems from both the attacker's and the target's perspectives. A well-implemented game mechanic is characterized by its clarity, consistency, and rewarding nature.